land in Dublin. As far as I'm, as far as I know, I think we're going to be landing. In I'm going to parachute into Springbank. I'm going to go right to Scamble. I'm just like, <laughs> get me a biplane. I'll just jump out. I was looking at a map. The Isle of Man, where Ralphie is, it, it's like a ferry away from. from <laughs> Should we go Waterford. knock on the Bothy? <laughs> like, are you filming in here? <laughs> I don't think you would allow it. <laughs> he on would, the island, actually. He would lose it. <laughs> hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. What about, this, what about this special special bottle? Have you had Spring a Bank 15? Anything, anything, anything Spring Bank 15 within the last year and a bit. So preceding the newest one. Um, this is this one is June, June 2022. And okay. the one the one I reviewed that made it onto my top six from last year was January 2022. And I also uh, tasted side by side with that in a review of last year, the end of the year from 2021. Mm -hmm. So all three of those were excellent. Well, this one is uh, January 21, the one I have. So is that outside of your envelope? Okay. I, I, I honestly, I find Springbank 15 probably the most divisive. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, up until like last year, I guess. I wasn't, it wasn't on my radar to continue to pick up. Spring then, 15 has had the most variance, it seems, and what we've tried, you know? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But you've, you've noticed an uptick. Oh, in 2022, both that I tried were phenomenal. Uh, there was one near the end of 2021 that was also phenomenal as well. Um, the first one that I ever purchased, I wasn't a big fan. I got a little bit more sulfur in it than I would have liked. This one definitely has the like Springbank characteristic to it. It for me handedly beat out the eighteen year old from last year. Yeah, yeah. There's a little 18. bit. There's a little bit of sulfur in this one, but it's not kind of vegetal sulfur. It's not. It's not the eggy farty end of sulfur. It's yeah. the kind of more match. Uh, you struck match type. Right, the more uh, colorful uh, sulfur, the more yeah. enjoyable actually. I do yeah, like, like that. It. I do like that salt. Yeah. Note. Yeah. I can, like a firework I, I, type note. Yeah. I can enjoy that. I can get behind that. Mm. It's it's the one that you mentioned, the eggy one that really, really gets under my skin. Yeah. I, I can't get behind that one. Yeah. Cause in here, it almost translates to just like a barrel char yeah. smokiness, you know? Yeah. It can almost be confused with like a Campbelltown funk. Yeah. Yeah, I feel a little bad for Spring Bank in a lot of ways. I mean, I don't feel bad for them because of how successful they're being and being celebrated the world over. That's fantastic. But I kind of feel bad that we are all there's two things happening now. A lot where we're we're reviewing it and talking about it less. So fair play to you for bringing it up and talking about it because it still deserves to be talked about why it's so successful. Um, but we're also kind of saying that thing, you know, when when it's almost like everybody knows that something's good, so people stop saying that it's good. Right, that right. makes sense, right? We're just like, oh yeah, but Springbank, and we we don't talk about Springbank anymore, and you always feel bad. Um, and and I was I was there recently, and I I was before when I was making the plans to, for the trip to go there, I was speaking to David Allen at Springbank, and he was talking about their success, and he says the sad thing for them, he said, obviously it's fantastic, there's challenges, you know, everybody complaining about they can't get the whiskey is a huge problem for them. The queues every morning when they open up the queue at the door and things yeah. there are there are difficult things to manage about that success. But the big problem is that nobody feeds back to them how much they're enjoying the whiskey anymore. <laughs> they used they used to get people saying, Oh, I love the 15, I love the 18, I love the 10, I love the long row red. They used to get people talking about it all the time. Now it's a commodity. Yeah. People want it, people need to get it. And they've noticed that what they're trying to do is manage that supply. And not really enjoy how much people are enjoying their whiskey anymore, and I think that's a bit of a, a well, shame there's this, there. There's this whole thing now. It's like I don't know how much you pay attention to the comment section when you're doing the Oswald. It's not probably not too much because you were busy with other things. But you know, when Springbank was announced Whiskey of the Year, you had a lot of people being like, "So deserving, awesome, great," and then you had a lot of people being like, "Ugh." Yeah, you know, there's like this like level of the stain where it's just like people are fed up with everyone talking about Springbank because they can't get it in their area, 
and they're just sick of it. You know, they're sick yeah. of being told. Yeah, yeah Mr. Springbank, you're doing such a great job that there's no <laughs> way you should get a reward, right? I know, right? I know. Uh, that's, you're just yeah, doing too good. You don't yeah. deserve this for, for doing too, too good. But of but, course, I mean, they, they obviously won Best Distillery. So it's, I think, and I think that's appropriate because, you, you know, they, 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 there's a reason for their success. They all, they just, they didn't turn up at work one day and just happen upon great whiskey. That's not what's happened there. Yeah. 40, 50 years ago, they were forced to make changes in the late 70s and the early 80s. Springbank was closed in the 1980s. And they started to realize that if they made contract fillings for other producers, they were never going to be in control of their own destiny, regardless of the scale that it was going to be at. They knew what Scotch whiskey could be. They knew what Campbelltown whiskey could be. So they started to make a strategy that would pull away from filling casks for other people. And, and also for bottling whiskey that was going to be involved in Dutch auctions for supermarket mass scale buying, cheap as it can possibly be with razor thin margins. They, they get burned by that and they pulled out of all of that. So then they were reliant on the enthusiasts. They were reliant on the people in the know, the people that loved the product and the people that loved what they did as a producer, employing people locally, all of the great things, doing everything naturally. But it's taken now four decades for them to, to be at the point where they are today. And then people don't want them to be celebrated. Right. Yeah. I think we owe them a couple of decades of celebration That's, of yeah. lack of availability, availability right? Because yeah. they me, need to be the torchbearer. Absolutely. It took me everything in my power not to include this whiskey into that tasting because I just <laughs> didn't want, like, it's not even, in my opinion, sad to say, but they're not in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just a, how can, I don't know. I mean, I don't know anybody that's been into whiskey and into scotch in particular for more than two years that wouldn't absolutely adore this whiskey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this, it's just, it, I know we're talking about a 15 year old. We're not talking about a 25 year old or a 30 year old. We're talking about a 15 year old that I would put up against majority of what I have on my bar. And I like to think that I purchase, you know, <laughs> relatively nice whiskeys, but it's fantastic. It and is. I was I was drinking the the ten year old last night, twenty twenty one, and I'm just like, this is just so good. Yeah, this is just so good. There's, I mean, they're ten year olds. You yeah. pour a ten year old. You pour, you know, even their their. <laughs> this... Go ahead. Ten year old Springbank is yeah. enough for for. Yes, yeah, it's enough. It is. <laughs> if you yeah. only had one whiskey and it was ten year old Springbank, hey, you'd yeah. be yeah. happy. Right. Especially that late 2021 you talk about, Jeremy, right? Yeah, the tropical, the... super tropical one, right? Unbelievably good. Unbelievably yeah. good. I could now answer that question with ease. And it's like, you know, pick pick a whiskey under under 20 year, years old that you could live with for the rest of your life, but that only that whiskey. You it has to be one. And I I think it would be really close. It would be really hard for me not to pick this. Yeah. If it could like be exactly be this, that. like the batch actually behind you, which is even better than this one, in my opinion. But doesn't the 10 year old say the most consistent out of it every does. single it's, year? It's phenomenal. Right? It's, like this changes yeah. probably the most. That the changes 18 it. changes quite a bit. Yeah. The 12, yeah. of course, does too. Like there's a lot of stuff variances. Well, it's the, the, I think what's what what's changing then? Like if I'm not mistaken, it's the fact that, you know, the 10 year old is ex bourbon cask majority. If is there any uh, they, it's still they still use a sherry cask in it and the makeup. But but yeah, it's the majority is right. is bourbon. Uh, my, one of my favorite ever spring banks was exclusively bourbon, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I know that I know that you have always been. I always in my mind that it's probably wrong, Rob. I associate you with being. You do have a soft spot for sherry, sherry matured German. whiskeys, right? Still, still to yeah, this no. day. He goes through. But Jeremy, goes I, I get the I get the feeling that you're a bit more fickle. I mean, I love a good sherry bomb. Um, but again, you know, the uh, I love the variety. Mm. You know, the variety is the spice of life. I mean, I just, I, it, you, we go through phases. We too. do. Like, yeah, like, sure. Like, you probably boasted about sherry for like a good, you know, year straight. Majority of my, yeah, whiskey tube career was sherry driven. And then there was like a year and a half to two years where I was like, I can't have another sherry. Whiskey. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was a while where I like it took, because every time we were getting a sherry whiskey, I was getting that like unsatisfied, 
uh, version of sulfur that I just I can't get around. And yeah, it, it seemed like they were just pushing sherry so hard at that time that they were just using whatever cast. And you can way. do you can do a sherry finish like pretty bad. You, oh, can yeah. do a, you can do a sherry finish pretty bad on, on a lot of things. So it, well, does, it all depends. That's kind of what my point was about the 15 is there's so much batch variation because it ultimately depends on the quality of the sherry casks that you're getting. And some years are going to be better than others. Mm -hmm. And in this, what for whatever reason, the end of 2021 and all the, the 2022s that I tried of that 15, the casks that they use were phenomenal. And so many more yeah. people are realizing now, like what a really good ex bourbon cast can do. Oh yeah, right. It's about time. Like, look at yeah. the Aaron Ten. Yeah. I think the Aaron Ten is like an excellent example. Of There's so many good examples of like majority ex bourbon or really good ex bourbon that's just blowing people away. You know, yeah. not enough. Not yeah. enough. Not You're enough. Right. Uh, right. Honestly, because what what we have is that there's a huge drive, as we've already touched upon for finishing and wine cast. You see it in independent bottle uh, outturns. You see it from SMWS. You see it everywhere. They don't want to just flood it all with ex-bourbon, uh, you know, first fill bourbon, refill bourbon, whatever it may be. They want to kind of mix it up and have a good range. To, and that's that makes perfect sense. It's understandable. I think the problem comes if you look at core releases, core ranges, especially when you've got like non-age statement cast strengths and then you've got a 10 and a 12 and a 15 and 18, whatever it may be, you very rarely see a core lineup with an exclusively bourbon matured release. Yep. And that is where we are failing a wee bit because mm -hmm. Scotch whiskey, I, I hate to tell you the truth is that, you know, we talk about the millions and millions and millions of barrels that's out there maturing in the landscape right now. They are bourbon barrels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what they are. There are very few of these kind of sexy barrels and when it comes to scale and volume and things it's um and i'm still talking about malt if you factor grain into that it's overwhelmingly you're down into the less than single digits of of uh, on the malt side but yeah. if you just talk about malt it's still a very very small amount of butts and breaks and port pipes and wine casks and all of these things rum casks there's a lot of it out there enough to keep us interested but i think we're forgetting how good time and patience and a bourbon cask whether it's first fill or refill or whatever it may be yeah. and i know that neither of you guys is probably down to me you never got to taste my loch lomond this year right i released a, a loch lomond this year 10 years oh, yeah. first fill bourbon chardonnay wine yeast it just makes me so excited for the future <laughs> <laughs> it's because for the last 10 years plus we've been making whiskey and and we're it's there now it's there it's not in bottles yet, but it's coming. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. I, I would love to try that. Uh, it, I'm assuming it's completely sold out, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've put a big asterisk here. Rob and Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time that the, a mule is traveling over the Atlantic, maybe Graham Young or. Well, um, we are cool. we are traveling over the Atlantic soon. We're, we might have a little trip coming in March. In, in March, we're yeah. we're we're going to be visiting Waterford Distillery in Ireland. Uh, so that's coming up this March. Um, we should be. You might go to Scotland as well. I'm a hundred percent going to Scotland. I I there's can't no, make there's it to no Scotland doubt about that. I'm going to Scotland. As teaching goes, I only have the one week. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump. You got to do it. I know. I I would love to, but and we're trying to. So it's Jeremy, Jeremy, <laughs> you see the little seat here. That's got your that's got your name on it, Rob. Can I play with you taking that Ralphie seat? Part. I'll take that seat. I'll take that. <laughs> seat. <laughs> that's perfect. I, I would love to see that you guys hook up in, in Scotland. That would be absolutely incredible and and worth the. I mean, the journey over there. I'm I'll excited. I'll cosplay as Ralphie and we'll do we'll do a mid year, Oswes. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, can do a, yeah. a live event from there. Ooh, live that will be the other cast. Well, at, depending on when you, I might still be in Canada when you're there, when you're in Scotland, right? Because you need to learn more of Ralphieisms than just wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Oh yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna go to Springbank and I'm gonna like veer off the tour and just like live in the Dunnage warehouse for as long as I possibly can until they <laughs> kick me out. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. So we are going to Waterford for two days for sure. Um, well, that's a good spot to go to, no doubt. But it's probably 
three or four hundred miles south of where you should be landing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. I, well, hey, I'll, I'll let you interpret that how you how you would like. I'm the plan is eventually, obviously, to spend at least two weeks in Scotland because I don't see it any other way. I don't see it working out any other way. We have to be there for two full weeks to get the full Scotland experience. Of course, yeah. Probably more than that. I don't know. Sure. Well, well, I think a lot of people make that mistake, Rob, and, and I appreciate the way you're thinking, but I think that what happens is people tend to arrive here and think, you know, they treat it like a bucket list type thing, like it's the only time they're ever going to do it. What they're not prepared for is how much it kind of sinks its claws into you. To be, and you'll find a way to be back again. Yeah. And back again. And it, and it becomes something that once you do it, once you realize that it's not that far, I have this theory that, if you're going to, if I'm going to get on a plane and travel to see my brother in the south of England, right? It's just, I get on a plane and 50 minutes later, we're, we're landing, you know, it's a flight. But it's the exact same me going across the Atlantic. You get on, you stay on the plane for a while and you get off. Yeah. So, and, and once you get over that thing and, and you realize that jet lag is something that you can actually manage and stuff and, and you get the, the idea that it suddenly seems much closer. I mean, I go to Texas every year I can, right? Yeah. I hope. Maybe one day I could meet you guys down there. You never know. I'd love to come to Canada too. It's, it's suddenly, once you do it once, you realize that you can do it again. So the danger, I think, is to try and cram too much into it. So, Jeremy, maybe if you, if you turn up here, after you've been in Ireland at the, at the team at Waterford, I don't know how many days you'll have, whether it's a couple, a weekend, um, or, or longer. But... I was going to say, let me know, but honestly, buddy, you don't have the ninja to get in and out of this country without me knowing about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Right. That would be cool. It, it really. So right now, I'm, I'm, we're flirting with too many things at the moment. Like my wife would like to come, but I don't know if she comes and we might take the kids. I don't. I, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Sure. Um, so at that, at at this point, it's impossible to say. And then if I go, I go by myself, it's going to be a quicker trip, I think, uh, just because of the logistics of it. So we'll probably land in Dublin. As far as I'm, as far as I know, I think we're going to be landing. In I'm going to parachute into Springbank. I'm going to go right to Scamble. I'm just like, <laughs> get me a biplane. I'll just jump out. I was looking at a map. The Isle of Man, where Ralphie is, it, it's like a ferry away from. from <laughs> Should we go Waterford. knock on the Bothy? <laughs> like, are you filming in here? <laughs> I don't think you would allow it. <laughs> on would, the island, actually. He would lose it. <laughs> yeah. He but would um, lose it. it. Yeah, let me let me let me know how the plans go for that. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're it's still in the works, but the, for sure we're spending two days in Waterford, and then I would like to do St. Paddy's Day in Dublin. Well, we'll do St. Paddy's in Dublin. I mean, you have to. Yeah. This Anok is out of control good. It's good. I haven't tried this in a long time. It's very good. Yeah. And, and for for the price it was at the time, it's so good. Yeah. Really good. So clean. It's it, it's a it's a, a switcher, Jeremy. I, you know, depending on what you sip it alongside, you know, the sherry comes out or the more bourbon side of it comes out. But for me, it's the spice... And it's a very detailed whiskey. There's a lot of kind of little intricate things to pick out. Um, right. it's, it's a contemplative thing. It's yeah, the spice profile is, and... is, is different than you get in other like more like Oloroso spicy kind of whiskeys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It it's funny because I, I don't know if I would be able to nail it blind, but I, I yeah, don't know. I feel like I might be able to because it definitely has that a knock characteristic yeah. that I love. Uh, the 18 had it maybe a little bit more. Um, and the 39 year old, you, you had a chance to try that 39 year old, that 1975 that I had. A while yes, back. yes, yes, yes. That was good. It, it was, it was good. I mean, it, it reminds me of that obviously at a, a lower scale, but um, combination of casts in this, uh, just I think, yep, bourbon and sherry, right? Yep, yep. Um, they don't mention it, of course, but um, I get the impression that. Or if it is all sherry, then there's a lot of, you know, third fill sherry and kind of, you know, right. uh, it's, it's kind of funny that we call it third fill sherry rather than calling it, you know, refill scotch. Because yeah. it, it has yeah. had scotch in it before, right? Rather than, it's <laughs> kind of, I've never, it's an ex-scotch I've never cask. A refill scotch barrel. Refill scotch barrel. I think actually Canadian distillers are starting to use that a little bit. 
That's true. They'll right. buy like a Lafroy barrel. Like that something. smoke point yeah, that you yeah. have that's yeah. aged in a old Lafroy barrel. Yeah. Right. And then I guess the newer ones might be in some Ardbeg barrels as well. Um, whereas the difference between um, two brewers and Shelter Point is the sh- the two brewers barley is Scottish peated barley. That's why that one is peated. Mm-hmm. Whereas the barley um, from Shelter Point is just Canadian barley in a and it's the distillate is aged in a peated cask. Right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, more than one way to swing a cat as well. Exactly. <laughs> right. I, I, I haven't and have no intention of a self promotion. I'm not going to talk about the channel. Could I plug the other project I'm involved in? No, oh, plug, plug everything. Plug everything. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys know about Dramface? Yes, yes. it's a beautiful blog. Oh, yes. Okay, good. And, uh, um, well, the blog side of it and the podcast side of it. So go ahead. Yes, I. Well, it's just I'm um, kind of it's we're coming up with uh, February will be one year of Dram Face, but it, all, it almost feels like it's been around forever, and we've managed the whole year of daily, uh, not seven days a week. We don't put content out on the weekends. We did originally back at the start when we had such a backlog of, of of content to put out. Um, but there's a fantastic team of writers there. They're really, uh, you've got people who are really good at painting fantastic images with words people who are brand new and really green and kind of just share in their early days of the journey. And then people that are really experienced, people that know about production, people who are kind of hobbyists to the point of uh, distillation and brewing and everything. And it's just a fantastic team that's behind it. And what I've realized is that while I've been letting Dramface earn its stripes and things, it's been growing and growing really, really well. Strong growth. It's fantastic to see the reception that it's had. But now we've put in a stronger social media team so that the, so that the, those writers that are putting out that content can get traffic driven to read their words and things. And it just, when we're talking about some of the topics that we've talked about in the, this couple of set, this couple of hours, I don't know if it's one session or two sessions you're going to cut this into. But if you talk about independence, Dramface is 100% fully community funded. You know, it's optional. It's for free. Some people can choose to step up, much in the same way as we do on YouTube, to support if you if you want to if you want to see the thing endure. Um, and to me, that's the model going forward. That's the way to do this thing. Once people realise that there's a value in the independence and the honesty and the integrity, most of them are pretty happy to pay a wee contribution towards it, right? Especially yeah. if they're saving money. And gambling a wee bit less, much like we do on YouTube. So, aha, uh-huh, for anybody that's morning coffee read, a commute podcast. If you enjoy listening to Rob and Jeremy, we put out a podcast. We do probably similar cadence to you guys in terms of output. I don't know, one or two a month at most. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's an hour plus of content, so there's plenty of listening. Um, I'm just really, really proud of the team what they've managed to pull off in the last year and it's incumbent upon me to just try and get the word out there as much as I can, especially when you've got prominent people in the industry standing up and saying there isn't enough critique in whiskey. If you look for it, it's there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, that was one cool thing about the Oswest this year. You know, you introduced me to a whole bunch of channels that I'd never seen before and uh, started exploring them and really good content. Everyone's putting out good stuff, so yeah yeah uh sure. yeah links uh description down below tram face check it out tram face blog podcast reviews yeah all of it and yeah that was, i mean this was really nice it was a it was a good podcast i really enjoyed getting to you know felt nice and casual just talking to a buddy. I, i'm bummed that you're drawing it to a close if i'm honest <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to go <laughs> i'm always drinking so much on these uh these whiskey rants yeah, and well, today was an exception because you had that four dram blind to do. Right. Yeah. How good? What like? What was your? How good is this stupid spring bank? I know it is good, <laughs> but honestly, like, I would take this. What? Yeah. Wow. I would take this. I'm impressed. I would yeah. take this over the spring. I mean, I do like the spring bank, of course. Of course, it's really good. Too. But this is just more balanced. This is just a. This is just yeah. a profile that is like it's just pour and play. Don't it is. Think about anything. It is. It's an everyday. 
Yeah. I mean, if a 24 year old whiskey isn't every day, but know, like right? yeah. for the price point that you originally I, originally paid, originally it was a, a, an everyday yep, whiskey. It could almost. be something that it's like not every day, but it's like you know, it's it's your weekend for it, maybe. Yeah, perhaps, you know? yeah. It was almost you know, at one point it was like, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but it was almost like you know, someone comes to your house for the first time and they want to try something cool. I almost felt bad pouring it because I felt like I didn't pay enough for them to feel like. <laughs> Sure. I wanted them to feel more worthy of a, you know, a more expensive bottle, but it's such a stupid way of thinking because it's such a fantastic bottle, Absolutely. but, uh, you know, yeah. it's just yeah. trying to be more generous, I guess, than necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to throw out one whiskey that you will uh, be purchasing this year? Something you have your eye on? You know, uh... honestly, I, I'm going to get up and grab it. So mind my back, but he's already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it, I'm gonna be buying more more of this Ben Romick type contrast stuff. This is the this is the this is the sherry. It's uh, it's here, and it's up there. The the peat the and what's wonderful about it, Rob, is it's they've put it out at the higher ABV, right? I mean, why, yeah. why Gordon McPhail? Why are you keeping your core range at? We asked ABV? them that. And we, like, yeah, this it still sells, so we do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it, I think they they don't they don't have plans. He admitted it. He said they don't have plans on changing the core range at all. And it and this is what I was saying earlier about it being at forty three percent is trying a few of them after trying these and that's when it took me to mm. go back and try a few of them right like, you know what these are really good yes but it just took me until trying this and some of the other stuff that they have at 46 percent to really go back and respect the other thing like sure. that that cash strength is phenomenal mm -hmm. yes the vintage 10 year old yeah. cash strength i mean yeah every time we see one of those in the future, it's instant, an automatic buy. Instant buy. I don't even, and, and the problem is the word is out already. So yes. now it's not even that easy to get those bottles. Uh, but these are still a little bit easier. This is my second bottle of the Sherry Cask Peat Smoke. I have the Bourbon Cask uh, Peat Smoke, which is a, a, a smaller, sorry, a, a lesser ABV. It's, or sorry, a lesser PPM. It's 45 PPM, the bourbon one, but it drinks more peated, I guess, because of the Sherry Cask influence. Yeah. It's 55 one. But just and they're all the, the the bourbon cask, that sherry cask that you have. There's another one I have up here as well, the Cara Gold, which is using Cara Gold. Yeah, that is a good one too. That's a good one. A, a yeah. percentage of Cara Gold malt. Yep. I agree with you there, Rob. I think the pick is that, or let's say the compelling one, the one that really, the memorable one is the is the 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 uh, peat and smoke. The sorry, the the sherry cask peated, the one that you have there. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um. And, and I agree that if you were going to recommend a Ben Romack to a, a whiskey lover, you know, you would recommend them the cast strength. It's it's just, it's always fantastic. You, but you can even recommend, if you talk about enjoying whiskeys sub 46% ABV, absolutely you can enjoy Ben Romack. It's an easy one to recommend, the 10 year, the 15 year. But it's heartbreaking that that 15 year and that 21 year is 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 stripped and filtered. Heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. It is. I yeah. think it's such a unique precious malt absolutely unique it's ridiculous that that's a space side whiskey there's no way it's anything like this idea of regional if you want to, to shatter the illusion of regions ben romack does it right because absolutely. it's so unique it drinks like a camel town it yeah. drinks like it, it it gives the illusion of a camel town almost every single time i drink it yeah people would be yep. very surprised blind tasting that yeah i think so yeah. They, they call it the spring bank of space Aid. absolutely yeah. it's, yeah. it's been called that on <laughs> Someone's been before it was brought to our attention <laughs> it's been called that on this on this uh channel and then and then someone brought it to our attention that ralphie had said ralphie it famously ralphie no famous. ralphie got it from me though oh did he ralphie got it from you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go <laughs> there you go so who did you get it from? Are you you the you the original? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it doesn't take. It, I don't think it. It doesn't take a leap to make uh, all independent channels who never collaborated or spoke or watched each other to sit down and drink up in Romac and all come up with the same conclusion. This is the spring bank of space side. It's sure. It's quite an obvious conclusion to draw, right? It's. Yeah. It, 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 that's clearly what it is. There's a funky element to it. There is something industrial mechanical oily wet rag sometimes yes. sometimes it goes a wee bit farmyard sometimes it goes all kind of overripe fruits and things 
it's just it does what it does very very well when i when i every both times i open the fresh pour of this sherry castle so this is the second bottle that i have that i'm going through now i get this beautiful and and people are gonna be like people new to whiskey are gonna be like what and i probably would have been the same thing but uh magic marker just like a like that oh, wow. black magic marker like aroma and it's just phenomenal what were those magic markers in school the flavored ones you smell they banned those at my school eventually yeah so that's they're called like, like mr per- stiff or something, something. I don't, I, oh those those like smellable ones? they were all smellable they all had different flavor yeah so a black marker on this one on that yeah on that it might it it, it dissipated throughout the bottle mm. so you might not get it as much i got it immediately on the palate on the palate not so much the finish but on the palate black yeah, magic marker for sure and when i first opened the bottle it just it filled the room with like that smell i was like yeah. this is phenomenal but yeah. it's not black marker it's not because what you're what you're speaking about is a kind of acetone solvent type no it's but it's not a negative thing no no no, and that's what i mean i love it i i absolutely but if you told that to if you go back seven years ago before i started whiskey in the six and you tell me you're gonna love a whiskey that tastes like black tastes and smells like black magic marker i would have slapped myself in the face well it depends <laughs> because like i like that smell yeah right well yeah you're right but yeah. back then i didn't have the palate for it sure i wasn't ready for it yeah i w- there's no way i was ready for that but there is a bit that it is in there maybe maybe not sharpie but maybe whiteboard marker yeah <laughs> not sharpie because sharpie has like they've yeah yeah no i don't mean sharpie sharpie has really like made their stuff not smell right i mean that old school like yeah the thick cheap silver yeah magic marker like right old, With, like they're really old like we're talking 15 20 years ago that. kids used to use like tag stuff like the old school like, yeah yeah not like, sharpie it was like an industrial marker yes it wasn't necessarily like kids didn't have it in their in their pencil case that's right say, right but if you were describing this to somebody in order to tempt them in to trying a glass, they would be like, "What? Yeah, well, yeah, that's why do I, they would they would have no interest in what I just oh, said." My family watches my Lafroig videos, and they're like, "What are you talking about? Road and tar? Are you like this? <laughs> like it smells like a hospital, yep. and you're like drinking it?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's great." If you would have told me that Lafroig would have ended up being one of my favorite distilleries in like the last few years, like ten years ago, I would have laughed. Mm-hmm hard in my my own face like yeah. in your face or whatever you know it's just... well do you know the amazing thing about what we're doing on youtube is that if we have the courage we can look back in our 10 year old videos and I see that. And, and see the transition you know i'm not just talking about how we age but our, our opinions on whiskey or yeah. what our favorites are and it kind of makes me really excited for the future of what i haven't yet decided i like right yeah that's why i started doing tasting notes Cause like you can look yeah. back and be like, yeah. okay, this is a spring bank 12 year old that I did in 2016. And like, look yeah. what I said about it. That's yeah. like, it's crazy to like to reflect it's and like have archive. that catalog of your thoughts at a certain given time. Absolutely. And yours are very neatly printed out as you go on your channel. So that's, that's going to be something easy to look forward to. I always, we always make the joke. Um, when I started my channel, my hairline was like here. And then, oh God, our, our hairline's like, don't look, don't look at them. It's amazing. Do you want to talk? Do you really want to talk about hairlines? I'm no. offended. Come on. <laughs> I would, I would kill for a hairline right now. Any, any kind of hairline. Right, like on our ten year anniversary, we should just do a time lapse, and it just you'll I'll see just that. like <laughs> slowly sucking it back. I want to do it. <laughs> That's I, something I, that a writer, a journalist, a blogger, they don't suffer from that, right? They just no. don't, they don't have their facade yeah. on video. Yeah, it's, it's true. And and we don't. I mean, I don't have movie star money to continue to like you know fill that <laughs> in. Plug it so. up. Yep. Plug it out. So yeah. that's, but. <laughs> You know, I, oh, I no, it's be... got to be integrity. It's got to be integrity, Rob. If it, if it falls out, it falls out. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, what, where are you going to be spending your dollars? Give us one or two. I, I, I've already, uh, so tomorrow's VPUB, the first VPUB back in 2023 is going to be kind of predicting our predictions for 2023. And of course, part of that is 
predicting what I'm going to be spending money on. But I found myself making notes, the exact same notes that I make every year. You know, I'm going to choose quality over quantity. That's a given. I think we're 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 finding ways to do that. I'm going to choose. Um, I'm going to explore more independence and spend more times because not because every, I know that not everyone can buy an independent. If I buy an indie that's only 200 bottles from a bourbon barrel, what's the point of me talking about that in the channel? Let's get very uh, low impact or low value, right? But the what I learn through enjoying that whiskey, what how it helps me expand, extend my understanding and all of these great things of what, whether it's the distillery or the maturation or whatever it is, I always just suggest that I'm going to buy more Indies. But if I'm honest, I've already mentioned at the outset of the, 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 the session is that my, my livelihood is about the channel and the community. Yeah. And I think it's incumbent upon me to find, to try my hardest to find where the, the good stuff lies in the everyday. So I think the majority of my 2023 spending is going to follow the majority of my 2022 spending. And I can tell you from my tax return, it very much was that <laughs> yeah. stuff that's available to everyone everywhere, yeah. very much in line with the Oswas, in line with a chunk of what we do at Dramface, certainly in line with what you guys review over on Sippers and Whiskey in the Six, stuff that we can all enjoy together. It's yeah. fine to sit in a chair on your own and just sit with a whiskey and just cancel everything else out, close your eyes, dim the lights, whatever it is, that's fine. But the the privilege of being able to share whiskey in 2022, 2023, right around the world is too good. And if we can work as a community to find where the gems are to mine those gems, that's what I'm going to focus on. I will make selfish purchases. Of course I will. <laughs> There's one was delivered this very week, actually, here. Yeah. This is very selfish. Um, and this is this is me being this is insider information. Uh, there's a or, or maybe it's already out. There was a Caden Heads dram face review out by Dallas, the winter out turn from Caden Heads, and he gave this a nine out of ten. Wow. And I said, Well, okay, it's 165 pounds. It's a Glenn Keith 24 year old from a bourbon barrel, interestingly. And uh, 165 pounds is a bit expensive. I um my in-laws didn't know what to buy me for Christmas this year. They can't buy me whiskey anymore because it's futile, right? Yep. So they just they just gave me cash and little little cute gift cards with a, a message in it. And it added up to £155. So this cost me £10 and this is my Christmas gift. <laughs> so nice. I will make selfish purchases, but my my whiskey purchasing is different from most people, I think because I'm probably buying for the channel most of the time. You, you've got to admit, guys, you buy for the channel. Let's oh, be yeah. honest. You buy things Absolutely. that you think you need to be up to speed on, right? Absolutely. Sure. Reviewing a, a single cask independent bottling that no one can get is like, what's the point? I it's mean, hard, it's sure, a, like some people are like, okay, yeah, cool opinion on that. Yeah. What, we, but like, at the end of the day... Yeah. We're not, we don't even really do formal reviews on those anymore. We usually do them on the rent. We'll, yeah. we'll review it, but we're not... Yeah. The rents are not focused on one whiskey in particular, usually, anyway. But so, that's like the value lies in those bottlings, but like to review them, it, it doesn't really make too much no. sense because like no one's going to see it. That's right. No one's going to see that bottle. You didn't answer the question yet. What about you? What do you, what, what's one bottle that you're, well, like at? I said, I've already purchased it, which I'm 18. Okay. Sorry. That's yeah. coming in. So that's um, coming. And then, oh, oh, the Aaron 18, the new Aaron 18. That's on the radar. Yeah. I'm absolutely. Thousand percent going to buy that when that it comes sure. up um and then i don't know i don't know like i want to get back into bourbon bourbon has been off the radar for like two years it's hard because we don't get a lot of it and the only ones that really interest me are like the calame 16 15 you got the 15 i want to try the 16 i'm interested in that i don't really... even still like a 15 year old bourbon yeah it's pretty good it's 170 dollars like no it's not worth it yeah so like for me i don't know it's like it's got to be scotch and world whiskey bourbon is just right at the back of the radar don't even really care yeah i would love to get some good quality bourbon but i don't see it happening so yeah i can focus on scotch there's good single malts coming out of the u.s but i would say like uh, bourbon is a pass for me rise are good yeah uh, yeah bourbon is just going to continue to be a pass for me probably in i know i noticed the kind of snapshot bit of b-roll that you put up at the last whiskey rant 
where you you put a picture up of I don't know the LCBO or whatever it was the bourbon oh. selection that you have. Yeah, right. And it's very very yeah. similar to our bourbon selection here, almost yes. identical, but but sure. just much much ours is much smaller. Of course, it takes up less space, I guess. Um, so it's difficult for me that the reason I've been able to explore really cool bourbons is through the community or through mm -hmm. travel. It's tough. It's tough. Um, and, and to be honest with you, if there were no other whiskies outside of Scotch, we would still be saturated. Yeah. So, so you have to make a, a very deliberate decision to explore Irish, English, yeah. American, Canadian, uh, world, whatever whiskies it may be, you have to make it. But I think it's valuable. I think it's important because as the prices in Scotch do this, um, I think that you know that there's a behaviour, there's a pattern happening in Scotch. Like they're still the only, the, the you know the, the 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 only thing in town, and that's not the case. It's certainly not going to be the case in the years ahead. It Scotch to has to, if it's still going to be that thing, it has to deserve to be that thing. I'm and excited to it's see. It's really it. interesting. A UK and or Ireland uh, airport. I'm I'm excited. <laughs> I, I'm like this. This is what is exciting about 2023 is that new distilleries making a name for themselves. Yeah, because there's so many coming out and there like are, are a, bunch. a whole bunch of like you know uh, new distillery of the year that got nominated for the All Ireland Scotch Whiskey Awards. We haven't had a chance to even try yet because they haven't like branched out this far sure. yeah. to our area. And that I think is what I'm most excited about. It's like trying new whiskeys that are making a name for themselves, new distilleries that are up and coming, that are producing like really quality stuff. Speaking of which, there's a there's an Irish distillery that Billy Walker is associated with, and I think he's one of the master blenders, or he's involved in blending, um, or at least re maybe one expression he was involved in blending. I'm not exactly. Uh, is it a new? Uh, it's it's. I don't know it. It's four hours away from, from where we're gonna be. It's four hours away from Waterford. I looked it up because I wanted to see if I could go to still. It's, it's gotta be north then, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Four hours from Waterford is most of Ireland. It's like yeah. you're, you're almost in Scotland by that. Yeah, point. <laughs> it's it's four hours uh, north. Yeah, west. Right. Northwest. So it's the western coast. Uh, it starts with an A. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah. yeah, I gotta look back. One that. more thing I have to edit into the show right now. Yeah, with that distillery. So Jeremy's yeah. gonna edit. Throw that. This will there be the right, second yeah. part. So you have an extra right week. There. Yeah, sure. Throw you have, <laughs> you have an extra week. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think it's gonna be exciting. I think there's gonna be more new releases this year. Yeah. Um, are they gonna sell? Are they gonna fly off the shelves like they did over 2020, 2021, the years of the pandemic, or are they gonna maybe sit around a little bit longer. Um, I hope, honestly, I hope it's a bit of both. I hope that they're successful and they're in demand, but I hope that we, we, that we don't see the crazy, where, where whiskey has drawn people that were never involved in whiskey before into it purely for profiteering, for flipping and things like that. Right. That's happened in the last couple okay. of years. And, and if we can make it so that these things are embraced and enjoyed, but enough of it so that it, Kind of keep keeps that out of it. Yeah, probably that's the better long term game. I think it's yeah. possible. I think I think it's only a matter of time with enough of these newer distilleries opening up and the amount of whiskey that's going to be available to people, mm -hmm. and the fact that people are pulling back, as Ralphie would say, on their purse strings or tightening their purse strings. Yeah, you know, um, you're gonna see things available a little bit easier, maybe that weren't so in years past. You would hope so. I think so because. Have you have you had a have you managed to get much Ardamarkin out there yet? Uh, just the one, just the one so far. I, yeah, the one you have there. This fifty eight point seven percent. The O two twenty two. The eighty. Oh, good. Okay, that's a good one. That's the first cast strength release. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did you the, think though? I really like it. I really like it. Um, very very nice. Whiskey. That's their that's their most heavily peated release. Oh really? Well, yeah. I, I mean, apart from single cask, I guess, but uh, core release—that's the most heavily peated. Did um, the did you did you get a chance to try the uh, Madeira cask? Oh my god, yeah. And that's I'm assuming really nice. Yeah, it's terrific whiskey. I mean, we, we it's it, you have to caveat it always. I mean, we're still talking about five and six year old whiskey at right. best. 
Yeah. Um, but it's just so exciting for the future. You know, we, 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 we talk about YouTube being a bit of an echo chamber at times, you know, and because everybody's excited about Ardemark and it takes a brave soul to decide that they're not excited about it or say it doesn't really, they don't really enjoy it. Right. But actually, that's not a brave soul. That's a hot take in YouTube, right. isn't it? Yeah, it, it really so, is. So what we're seeing is not the product of an echo chamber. What we're seeing is actually, I think, for the, for the most part, consensus that Arnhemark is genuinely a really quite exciting whiskey. We've got something that's a real West Coast Highlander. It's got salinity. It's got minerality in there. It's yes. got the fruit, lots of gorgeous spice. It's got everything that you need. And it's already doing very, very well at a very youthful yeah. age. You know, and I think as time goes on, we're going to see, it's going to be wonderful to see what happens with more and more mature stock making it into the makeup of Arna Market. Yeah, I could just imagine. Because uh, watching them speak to their their product on the Oshawa's, it was it was really nice to see. You could just see that they're very down to earth, really really good people, and their product, they're proud of it. They're it's something that they love, obviously, and they're very proud of it, and they're happy. And you can just see the genuine uh, glee in the fact that other people are liking it as much as they do, right? So um, it was nice yeah. to see. It was nice to see. I you don't get to see that side of. Scotland, at least, uh, very often. I get to see it a little bit more with the Canadian distilleries that are out there, but I don't get to see it as much with Scottish distilleries. So it was really, really nice to see that side of it. Um, well, it was interesting in the online Scotch Whiskey Awards of 2022 that, you know, we saw Springbank, Signatory Vintage. We saw Arda Markham. We saw Glen Scotia stepping forward. We saw Aaron stepping forward. And, and that was really nice to see. But when you don't see Chivas Regal, uh, sorry, it's not Chivas, it's Pernod Ricard, the Irish distiller, stepping forward for the Red Breast, winning two categories, by the way. Um, and uh, Nika, they don't step forward to, to make any mention of the fact, you know that they do not see us. Yeah, they don't. As important or part of their market. Um, so they actually spoke louder by their absence than if they'd turned up and said something polite. Like, uh, you know, at Compass Box even, they just sent in a little pre-recorded video, which is fair enough, nobody's available, great. But they were genuinely excited, so they sent in a... Um, but Nika, Irish Distillers, Pernod Ricard, they, they didn't respond to any communication wow. direct to them or to their PR. <laughs> wow. It's clear, it's going to be interesting to see because the community spots this. Yeah. And the community have messaged us to say, we're embarrassed that nobody stepped forward to say how cool a thing. Thousands of people voting for their product and they they just don't, not even a polite email, nothing. It, you know, it was, I don't want to say it was disappointing to see how well Redbreast did, but I like, I do like Redbreast, but I do notice a huge decline in their cast strength and, and what it was just five years ago. In the old label, I found it was so much fruitier i don't know if what's changed maybe i'm just getting the wrong batches i don't know but it's, it's quite possible but i have not been as big a fan of red breast 12 yeah i, I made my own great. whiskey calendar in 2022 yeah. and i poured 24 whiskeys put them in little bottles and just dumped them into a box and i had my son or my daughters pull out one blind and they poured it to me the only one that came across as bland that i declared not something i would be interested in pouring another dram of crazy was red breast 15 wow hmm. yeah. and blind it was just like it was like it's the only one is people love it you know people yeah. love it and i love it i've spoke positively of it in the past so that was an interesting take and it might be what you mentioned rob it might be the fact that they're because the demand for red breast is through the roof north american sales for that stuff is ridiculous it's, oh yeah off the charts so yeah and it was built on the back of that old label the old you know the old robin on the on that yeah. label it was just that cast strength yeah. i remember trying that for the first time and being absolutely mind blown the sherry cast they were used in those old batches were so good it was just so fruity. we had a lot of good batches yeah it was just so 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 fruity yeah and it's just not that anymore yeah. i don't find so there's pressure been. on Irish whiskey as well. It's been the fastest growing category for a number of years now. Blowing up um, 40 plus distilleries now, malt, malt distilleries in Ireland. 
Um, it's just incredible to see, uh, actually not just malt, I mean, they're much more experimental in Ireland, but it's it's going to be incredible to see um, how things develop there going forward as well. Listen, see if you're a drinker, if you're somebody on the outside like us looking in and just enjoying this stuff, is it not really, really exciting? All The only hurdle we need to overcome is is defining the choice because this variations are so 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 wide and the price the price issues you know the the affordability of it is becoming more and more if you guys haven't seen it yet you're going to see it soon because right. the price jumps that we are seeing here is they are cynical they are ugly repugnant they're ridiculous yeah, I, I guess the LCO was... just spins a big wheel like what should we charge for for yeah for uh, Lagavulin freaking 16. New, it's just like, let's just pump the price up. The new yeah. DJ releases, speaking oh, of price yeah. increase, I just, Crazy. I can't, I can't justify buying any of them at that price. Yeah. Not one. I won't. I will not. There, not one of them is coming in under a three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's, it's absurd. It's crazy. It's there absurd. must be so many people out there that look at two products, one at three hundred dollars, one at one hundred and fifty, and decide that the one at three hundred must be twice as good. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's positioning. It's positioning. Yeah. However, they're playing a very dangerous game because they are dancing with luxury goods and fashion, and that's not a long term plan. I don't, I don't think, my my opinion, because people have all the knowledge in their pocket now. Yeah. Yeah. And they can dial up and they can hear Rob at Whiskey in the Six talking about the latest whatever it may be that they, as they stand in the airport on their 5G connection yeah. with their AirPods in their ear. And Rob's saying, I paid $230 for this and it's piss. Yeah. You know, and, and then why don't you buy this at half the price and it's on the same shelf? And, and, this is becoming more and more of a thing. They're going to. There is. There are only so many rich people, hordes of rich people out there. I don't. Everybody's chasing the high end. Yeah. The high end isn't that wide. It's. It's. They're. They're corralling themselves into competing with each other. Good luck to them all. I, we will I'm work sure. together as a community. I think to find where the value is. I'm and the sure value, the as is you've got on the table in front of you right now, the value is out there. Yeah. There's lots of it. A ton of it. This this bottle here, eighty dollars. Yeah, $80. this is one you can get right now. $80. Great value, and great price. Yeah, and available. Available, right? I'm not buying. I'm not buying much over that at that price range. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to. It is. I'm just shocked that Diageo's doing this to themselves again. You thought that they like bailed themselves out with that, with with the introduction of this range. Yes. And and they were all well priced. There was a Craig and Moore twenty year old, twenty year old. Yeah, that was that was very 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 good. Very very I think, good. I think I paid one hundred and twenty dollars Canadian for that. This was their whole plan, though. I, this was I, their whole plan. I get it, but like it's just it's so disappointing yeah. to see them play this game again. They they literally painted themselves into a corner. <laughs> right before this release and then they're like we're gonna save our asses sorry I've, the, the crag and more's up there but i just i, I want to listen to you it's the 20 yeah. year old crag and more but that was 120 pounds so imagine you guys got it for less than 200 oh, canadian we got a great, yeah, deal, we got on a great deal on that bottle. Great deal yeah, on incredible that. Bottle. but at least it was 20 years old <laughs> you know what i mean and it's cash strength and it's well represented we got 11 year old talisker coming in at almost 300 dollars now like these are all exceeded 200 dollars yeah you know that the, the Lagavul and twelve year old that years ago was close to one hundred and ten bucks. Ooh, two thousand seventeen. What a great year for that. I, yeah, and with great price. Yeah, and, and now I, I think three hundred bucks for the for the twelve, right? Yeah, well, it's close. It's two I mean, sixty. It, like well my, my last lag of and twelve purchase and it's heartbreaking for me believe me i've got such an emotional investment in that distillery and those products and those bottles my last lag of villain is a 2020 release of the the special releases and i'm just i'm just done now because you know what is really good whiskey and arguably there's there's if your mood is right there's not much to to beat it yeah but it gets to the point that it, you, you this is you know that the market's going to pay it now and you're just constantly pushing and pushing and pushing to see what will pay. Now you're in the realm of there's too many other nice things out there for that money. Far Absolutely. too much. And Absolutely. what's really interesting is that if you go into the five years ago when the special releases came out, most of them sold out, you know, most of them did uh, six, seven years ago. 
then they started to get silly. I mean, there's one over here that I love. I'll show you this one. A distillery, a distillery that I love. And I, I was desperate for this one. But when I saw the price, I just said, there's no way I'm going to buy this. This is Chininic, 17-year-old. They had it out for their 200th anniversary. So 1817 to 2017. But this was £275 for a 17-year-old whiskey. I mean, there's just I suddenly I was I was destroyed because I realized that there's no way I can ever touch that, that bottle that I've been desperately waiting for. Yeah. Then if I go on to the whiskey exchange right now, this is 2023. Six years ago, this was released almost five and a half years ago, right? You can still buy this now. That's how much they screwed up. <laughs> wow, this and I bought this at auction for 130 pounds. Wow, <laughs> I feel sorry for somebody lost money on yeah, this, and it wasn't yeah. Diageo, yeah, absolutely, because somebody bought it at retail, but they've still got this collecting dust. And if there's a flash sale online, at, remember at Master at Malt, this was one of the ones that went on flash sale. Um, you know, this is that this is the type of whiskey, and by the way, if you can pick this up cheap, don't judge this as a 17 year old whiskey, this is lemon sherbet and fizz and this is genuinely good chininic whiskey it's it's a really quite fantastic fresh vibrant lovely malt but the 130 pounds i paid for it that's probably the ceiling mm -hmm. 275 is nonsensical yeah. uh, talisker 18 that was nominated in the oswas in 2021 yeah. went from eight, sub 80 pounds in the uk to 175 in yeah. one step. Yeah, that is absurd. We purchased the Talisker's 18 for less than 100 American. Yeah. This was a while back. It was a long time ago. And 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 then what we saw what like what what happened to the price. Even Talisker 10. Talisker 10 now is Roy, a joke. is $140 Canadian here. Talisker 10 year old. And you know, you can get any nope. Yeah, you can get any Glen Alecky under, I know they're not, they're not comparable ones, Peter ones, not whatever, but any Glen Alecky under 18 years, 18 years old or younger for less than that. No, how does that make sense it's to just, anybody? It's a shame writing off distilleries. Like remember Ardbeg? Remember the, those days we used to buy Ardbeg <laughs> special like, releases? Remember Ardbeg? Remember Ardbeg? <laughs> we used to like yeah. get excited about the community releases yeah. and stuff like that. And now it's just like nothing. nothing. Like we don't even care about well, Ardbeg anymore. I, I, Ardbeg is done. Yeah. Ardbeg is absolutely done. It's sad, but it's, it's true. Done. And it's it's not because the, the quality is not there. The 10-year-old the is fantastic. The, the core range. I'm talking about these special releases that come out year after year after year. They just get worse and worse and worse. And the right. prices go up and up and up. And it doesn't even matter about but the quality. But it's not even as good as the 10. Like it's, it's not the even quality, as good. The quality doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, that. you're right. Because it's no. like, it's going to sell out. And it's going to sell on the secondary market. It's going to sell at auctions. And then like, people don't even open the bottle. So like, what does it, what does it matter? Ardbeg knows that they have two fan bases. They have the fan base that always has to have an art bag on the shelf and they're going to buy the five or the 10 and that's it. Maybe once in a while they'll splurge and get a Corey, they'll get an Ugadal, whatever, but they're sticking to the core range and that's it because they know it's quality. Then they have the other fan base. That's not necessarily a fan of the product, but they're just a fan of what they can get on secondary market. And that's everything else that they put up. Yeah. Literally everything else. Yeah. So, and, and that unfortunately, and who suffers from that? Who suffers? We do. It's the people who have invested over the years, the real fans, the hardcore people that helped them be the Renaissance distillery that they were. They were in the 1990s, the late 90s, Ardbeg was in ruins. Glenmorangie um, comes in in and, and 1997 and brings it back to life. And, and you know, the, the, it took a huge amount of When we talk about that fan base, are we talking about, you know, the people that are replacing the 10 year old? No, we are talking about the invested enthusiasts. And how are they repaying them by every year bringing them something special and saying thank you for your loyalty? In order to, to maintain your loyalty to us, you now have to pay more. And unfortunately for the recent committee releases, in my opinion, less interesting releases. Yeah. The last one famously, I think the unanimous agree it's so easy to say that the last one that really grabbed us was potentially Dark Cove. Some people liked black and other expressions. But they're they're literally saying oh, thank you for being our fans. Yeah. Now you need to pay more. That's right. And Balvenie's doing the same thing up here too. It's, it's just how long will this endure? 
Well, it'll endure for as long as the fans are willing to pay it, I suppose. And right now, it seems like they are. Mm-hmm. Same That's as not... McAllen, but the fans have changed. The McAllen fans are not the same as the fans no. of McAllen of 15 years ago. It's a completely... Oh, McAllen died family. as soon as he started getting into it. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Because, you know, like there was some buzz around the edition series and whatever else, but they never really got their wings back after they decided to pull all those age dated whiskeys out. Right. They went the Sienna, the gold, the ruby, which were okay, overpriced maybe for what they were. The quality has gone down. The quality, I mean, you really like that that 15, which is fine because there's not much competing in the 15 year old range in the McCallum distillery. But the 12-year-old quality has gone down a lot, oh, in my yeah. opinion. Like you, you compare that to the old box 12-year-old, and they don't even sit on the same shelf. No. Um, what was the one that I was thinking of that did pretty much the exact same thing, and now I've lost it? Well, Belvini. Belvini. I, I, I don't know. It wasn't a very well-watched um, review I did recently, but it was the 15-year-old, a newer 15-year-old versus uh, an independent teaspoon uh, it was a Balvini with a teaspoon Glenfiddich in it, and it's like 24 years old or something, 25 years old. Is that Ward Head or Burnside? Or... Burnside. It was a Burnside, Burnside Archives. Yes. And it was phenomenal. Yeah. And the reason why I put them side by side, not because of like the age makes no sense and the ABV makes no sense side by side, but the fact that I got that Burnside at like sub $200 Canadian, 25 year old independent bottle versus a. Three hundred dollar, fifteen year old, um, Balvini, and yeah. the quality difference was just astronomical. Yeah, it was it was embarrassing in my opinion. That's your core range. You're charging three hundred dollars for Canadian, and it doesn't even come close to no. worth anything in that. Like any any fifteen year old, I would probably take over that 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 Balvini that I had. Maybe it was a bad batch, whatever. But the they're single that, barrels, but. I mean, there's an argument that they, they're allowed to cash in on uh, decades of building a brand. And Balvenie absolutely have built a brand since the 80s, right? They they really, really have. But it does get to the point where um, how, how many people out there are happy to spend hundreds of dollars or pounds or euros or whatever it may be on that product? How many... Yeah. When there's so much whiskey coming behind it, like a tidal wave of whiskey, not just scotch, but from every every country seems to be making, and, and worryingly or encouragingly, it's we're not talking about crap whiskey. We're talking about really quite compelling, tasty whiskey at a young Absolutely. age. Absolutely. How long can they keep that up? So they, they're, it's okay to build a brand, but your brand has to be quality, Rob. And that what you're saying is that you're tasting these things, the decline in the McAllen 12, the decline in the committee releases from Ardbeg. This is detrimental to your brand, eventually. You, you, you can't keep selling a Bugatti and build it like something from the Soviet era. Right? You just, yeah. The quality has to, to be there in order to maintain the, the, the thing. And, and, and whiskey will be found out. Because everybody knows, everybody knows, and if they don't know, they find out very, very quickly. Yeah, I, I think Bowmore maybe I'm hoping, fingers crossed, but I think Bowmore kind of recognized where their folly was in the the 26 and 27 that that kind of like wine cask influence release. They were so expensive, they still sit on shelves in Ontario right now, and they're much, they're much, um, you know older i guess as an expression like sit like we're talking four or five years ago or three years ago whatever it was versus the aston martin which yes is a marketing gimmick and whatever else but coming in at a fraction of the price of those Mm -hmm. right so hopefully and and you're talking about a whiskey that's 21 years old on on paper but has 35 36 and 37 year old whiskey inside of it as well yeah uh, and we're talking a good chunk at 40%. Right. So hopefully I think Bowmore is onto something and they're finding their way because I do believe that that's a distillery that has all the potential in the world if they really wanted to. Yeah. Oh, it's just, I mean, I've been in, I've been in that warehouse. I've been in the number one warehouse at Bowmore and sipped whiskey straight from the cask. 
and I I don't mind telling you that tears were shed. I mean, this was just there's I'm not just talking about you know the fact that we're in a Dunnage warehouse and it's this was whiskey like would make you understand in vivid detail why you love whiskey so much. What so many times it's the story from producer after producer after producer. What makes it into the bottle and onto the shelf for various reasons is very rarely a decent representation of that. Now, I don't deny that the things that they're rolling out for the warehouse experiences are handpicked and, you know, really quite exceptional casks more often than not. But we know that when things are handled a wee bit better, when they're put together with thought and consideration, and they're not reliant on just tumbling the stuff out, dose it with caramel, put it out, meet, make it meet minimum spec, sell it, stack them high, sell it, however it is they do it, which is unfortunately more today, their non-age statement entry level is really poor. Yeah. I, I don't want it in my house. Yeah. Uh, the 12 year old barely passes, you know, the 15, some interest. It takes something exceptional from Bamore, like what you're talking about. Somebody has made, has taken care to put that together yeah. in order for us to taste how, why Bamore is a legendary distillery. That's right. Their core range does not represent the, the standing of that distillery. And, and it, I don't think it has for, a, I don't know, eight years, a decade more. I don't know. It's yeah. just, it's, I think it's poor. Very yeah. poor. There's and so worse, many... I don't know what it is in Canada. We get it at 40% here. 40. Yeah. I think it's 40. 43. Everything right? except for the, the 18 is 43. 18 is 43 here. The 18 is 43 and maybe the 15 is 43. Yeah. But the 12 is 40. 40, yeah. Yeah, there think, there are some bottlings we do get forty three that that the UK releases forty, which is weird, but that's how it works. But there's like all these distilleries that have made a name for themselves now are just like stretching their core range out and like what can we produce at maximum margins and still have people buy it? And I think that like all these new distilleries now are just going to come up and just burst through all of that because like so. the selection is going to go up and up and up and up and like. It's just, it's going to blow up in their face. It's, they're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to adjust. I, at some well, point. Uh, it's often controlled by uh, importers, agents, distributors, people making demands based on, you know, give us some of this dark whiskey sales. Don't give me anything that's paler than Johnny Walker Black. Yeah. You know, the, what, so, but what they're actually talking about, the market demands, that's not the drinker. That's the the agent, the importer, the distributor, that's the, the market locally, wherever it is, them making those demands. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how, how independent voices, how the internet, how access to all of this information can break that and dissolve that a little bit to make people realize that if you want quality, it's not about color and it's not about age often. It's not about the brand on the bottle, the distillery that it's from. It's it's about quality, yeah. and and I th and I think that that that, that it, hopefully as you say, Jeremy, that that variation. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't see, even if Ardamore can do amazing things, they're not going to be sell. They're not going to be able to sell to every market. They're not of that scale. Yeah, maybe I'm being naive. Maybe they can. Maybe they can grow and, and be that big. Uh, if we talk about uh, all the you know the Deanstons of the world, who's a pretty decent scale malt distillery, you know. Will they manage to get, and uh, you know, if they keep good quality stuff and everything? I'm not sure. There's still a place for for brands and large scale production and and kind of people that are not us that just want the reassurance of they they drain a bottle, enjoy it, and replace it with the same bottle. That's still going to be the bulk of the market, but I think that fashion and vogue what's in vogue and what is the latest buzz does play a big part of it and i think that you know who could have seen 20 years ago our big was was a cult brand now it's a brand a global brand there are smaller whiskies that smaller brand smaller distilleries smaller producers today that we're enjoying and we can buy fairly easily that in the future is going to be at the status of Spring Bank is right now, unobtainium. Can you buy Spring Bank in Canada? 
Yeah, uh, just Alberta. <laughs> well, you, some some Quebec uh, releases. Here in stuff. Ontario, the last time Spring Bank was available for sale was like early 2020. Yeah, we just the 10. It right. was yeah, the 10 in 15, 18, maybe they never had 21. Hazelburn 10, Spring Bank 10, and uh, Long Girl, um, NES, NES. Yeah, that's it. But it's, it's been long gone since then, they haven't yeah. brought it back. In 2022, I started to see the 15 and the 10. Uh, not let's not say on the shelf, but you could walk into a retailer and find one or two bottles sitting there. Um, yeah. but before that, it was it was complete unobtainium. Yeah, but Springbank. Do you, do you know how many Springbank make across all of their ranges? Less than half a million liters a year. Yeah, small. Less than half Very across small. Hazelburn, Longrow, Springbank, and you, you, so we're talking super small. But they don't sell. They don't trade. It's just for them. Fair play to them. They make fantastic liquid, and it, now it's legendary. I mean, it's in the. If you're one of these maniac investors, you know enjoy your life <laughs> it's just open some of those bottles and taste them it'll change your life while you're still alive <laughs> well that's the it's thing. amazing that you're making money but spring bank's now appearing on the top 10 um so so you can understand why it's it, it's competing we are competing with investors to buy the bottles now we of course we understand but it's there because of the flavor and the quality not because of the brand it's because of the how good whiskey it is. I hope it stays that way. I hope. I mean, I think what will be nice is, like you said, you're starting. And I noticed that as as well. This year wasn't as hard to get the ten and the fifteen, and I'm hoping it stays that way because I think people are starting to feel like, you know, there's not as big of a return on your investment if you buy the ten and fifteen rather than buying the the ones that are you know only nine thousand bottles per release or or whatever. Right. You know. So and the, and when you could buy it, even if you didn't need a bottle, you were buying it because it was there. That's right. And you were hoarding. That's right. I'm part of the yes. problem too. Well, yeah, because well. if it's if it's not me or you buying it, that we're gonna open it and drink it eventually. The it's someone is someone else is buying it and they're gonna flip it or they're gonna whatever. Like yeah. it's at least we'll drink it, enjoy it. Yeah. Right. We'll eventually drink it. How many too good not I have up too. in that corner there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. Yeah, and it's it's unfortunate because before we even got a chance to really dig our hands and teeth into Kilcare, and it went the same way. It's become the same thing now. It's it's just as collectible, just as sought after. The twelve occasionally is on the LCBO shelf. That's it. That was a that was a a dime in the rough of the LCBO what? for a long time for a while. Yeah, because it was a, it was a hundred bucks or something like ninety bucks. It was yeah. great. It was a good deal. That, Incredible. That one there, the twelve year old that I have there, that I bought that at the LCBO last year. Yeah, and it was I think one of three bottles left on the shelf, and it was just a fluke. I wasn't even looking for it. I just found it, and it was nice <laughs> to actually be able to go into the LCBO and buy something that I was interested in. If you nice the LCBO brought some more Campbelltown stuff, now they're just like, nah, we're not gonna go there. What? So Roy, like, if the if the LCBO wanted to, they could easily go to each distillery and say, we want. One of your better casks every year for whatever. And they could literally sell out of it every single year without qualms and have that kind of buying power to do it. And they don't. They they just and recently an article was released about the the wages of people at the LCBO. Have you seen this? I don't want to see it. So top fifty people, the fiftieth person is making two hundred thousand Canadian. Yeah the number one person and it's everything in between the number one person is making 700,000 Canadian. So between 200 and 700,000 and everything in between these guys can't use their, like this collective mind to figure out that there's a huge whiskey community in Ontario that is deprived. It's, it's depressing because the LCBO has like the second largest buying power of in all of North spirits America. in North America, yeah. right? They're huge because yeah. you can only buy from the LCBO in this province. Yeah. It's the biggest province in Canada. Um, you know, they're bigger <laughs> than a lot of other independent stores. They're, they're huge, yeah. but they do nothing, nothing to satisfy their consumer because they don't need to. 
No, run of the mill vodka and, and other. They sell three hundred million cases of Smirnoff a year, and they're happy with that because, like, what? Why? They're like the Costco, right? They only need to bring in certain brands. Why yeah. expand? Why no. do something cool for your consumer? You don't need to do that at all. There's, there's no point. Yeah. When there's no when there's no competitor, no competitor, they can just sit on their ass. It's right. Just, exactly. They, they it's have absurd. Monopoly. Yeah. They charge whatever. It's, it's not going to change while there's so much money being made. There's, just, there's, there's no, no one can change. Sucks. There's a top fifty. Have you ever watched that episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza walks in with his briefcase into work, makes it look like he's like really stressed, gets into his office, closes the door behind him, and watches the clock for the entire day <laughs> every day? That's what fifty people, two hundred thousand dollars or more, right. are doing at the LCBO right now every day. That's right. what they're doing. So. Yeah. And and you know what the, the the really sad thing about that is probably it's not their fault. It's just that no. they don't. It, it's a legislative thing, isn't it? It's just it's been allowed to be like that for so long. But in Alberta, right, they have a much more kind of liberal approach to sourcing. Is that true? Or? No, they have, they have privatized it's liquor sales, right? It's like it's not government ish. controlled as much, right? No, they pay a tax, yes, but there's not like a, a control board doing goes, what they do it goes to so it's just way it's way more approachable and and every distillery that's ever told me that they're dealing with the lcbo has told me the exact same thing it's just not they're not approachable it takes like shelter point's been trying to get into lcbo for the last five years yeah so how does that make sense you have one of the better canadian distilleries because they're in the west coast They've been trying to get into the LCBO for the last five years. And finally, it's going to happen with it. Like, they didn't even give them a proper timeline. It's anywhere within the next year and a half, two years. One problem with the LCBO is, like, it's shelf space. And P and big brands pay for premium shelf space. And there's only so much that they were willing to source out. And what the LCBO needs, and this is a great point made to us by our one buddy, uh, Bobby. They need, like, other outlets to sell whiskey. And other outlets to sell specialty yeah. liquor. They need yeah. stores that are just whiskey or just whatever, or just rum or just, just what they can't compete with like their main store. Cause there's only this much self space. And it's like, it's, it's the pictures we take. Yeah. It's, it's Jack Daniels and it's bullet bourbon and it's, you know, it's basic, 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 basic. Yeah. They need another yeah. outlet to sell cool stuff and they could easily do that. Absolutely. Easily, easily do that. And Absolutely. sometimes they do. There was a pop-up. Uh, whiskey store for about a year and then they kiboshed it. Yeah, but the problem with that is it's always going to be more of the same. You need someone with whiskey chops that is running that store that's contact, do, willing to do the due diligence to contact Scottish distilleries and, and all these other places. Yeah, We're it's just frustrating for us because we know they could do it. They have yeah. the money and the power because it's a billion dollar yeah, multi-billion dollar yep. revenue source for this province every single year and they just, they don't care because why would they? There's no there's no competition, so they don't they don't need to. We've completely digressed. <laughs> we are officially no way. We're, we're, we always roll back to the LCBO at some point in time during these rants. Do we give them a fresh start this year on the ticker? No, keep no. it rolling. Okay. I don't even keep it spinning. Where we left off. Keep it spinning. Else. Keep it spinning. Uh, Roy, before we go, what's what's one thing you're really 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 looking forward to in 2023? Uh, events oh my god always events and I know that that's hard because I guess that you guys I don't know if you have many events or whatever even the one that's coming up for you in a few weeks time is Vancouver right it's a way over west yeah you, you must have you must have things much, much more local in Quebec and, and Montreal and, and Ontario have, closer to you and yeah in Toronto there's the spirit of Toronto which we we used to go to more often and that's becoming absurdly out of price too. It's they want a lot of money. They want a lot of money to go there. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so the Glasgow whiskey festival comes in in November and the ticket is 40 pounds. See, like, how does that make sense? That, yeah, how's that even I, but, but here's the thing is that you go along and it's free pour. You literally hold out a glass and, and they'll, they'll pour whatever is on the table for you. Yeah, isn't now, that... of course, the caveat there is that the majority of the stuff on, on the table is core range stuff. Yeah. But it is a very, very efficient way for you to get trying things that you've not tried yet. But there are also new distilleries there. There are independent bottlers there. There are people there. With... There is no way, no way that 
if I if I really worked hard from now till the Glasgow Whiskey Festival in November to try every whiskey that came across my path, I would still turn up at the festival and find a plethora of stuff that I've never touched. Right. We and, and that's because it's subsidized by the exhibitors. They bring the stock to share. Right. So, They're yeah. trying to sell their stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's how it is at the Spirit of Toronto as well. Yet the ticket price, I think this year we priced it out. It was going to cost us almost over three hundred dollars Canadian just to go. Yeah, and if we wanted to yeah. do like a special event or something of that sort, it was going to be even more on top of that. And something as like simple as the the Benaromic core range was going to be like another hundred bucks. So you need grassroots festivals. Yes. Yeah. You need you guys to get together and say we'll do our own festival, right? We'll do. And I don't. I know this that province, though, is, is, is tough to do it in this it's, province. Well, yeah. not if you bring in the distiller, the ambassadors from each distillery and say, hey, we're going to put together this event. Yeah. We're going to put together this event at this hall, for example, this banquet hall. We can fit a thousand people. Um, you know, we just we're going to get these guys in the door, pay for the minimal amount of food that they need for the night or whatever it is. That's what they're going to pay for a ticket. Nobody's making a profit. We're going to just run this thing. So it's like Wayne stock. If you book them, they will come. Right. I, I guarantee you these distillers would line up to do it. It's, it's, it's the way the system. Is Until working. Spirit of Toronto say, if you support that gig, you don't get to come back to this gig. Exactly. And then the distilleries that stand up and say, okay, we're going to go with that gig. Screw your gig. That yeah. that's, that's what separates the grist, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. what's it called? The, the the wheat from the chaff or, yeah. or so to speak. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's, they have to decide. It's like, if you're going to price something out, you, they're just going to be preaching to the same people year after year. Whiskey has to be a people's drink. It has to be inclusive. It has to be accessible. And as soon as it's been priced out by dynamics like that, it is literally setting its own death clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People say to me, why, are, why is it so many people into whiskey? the age, the de demographic that they are. I don't know what you were earning in your early 20s or your late teens, but I wasn't earning enough to enjoy whiskey. Yeah, that's true. And no. it's still, we still it marches on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's just so short-sighted. Short and it takes disruption and innovation and, and thinking and, and creativity to, to dispel that that horrible thing yeah. you know because it's tempting for any business to make money you know make hay while the sun shines but there's there's short to medium growth and there's there's long-term stability and growth so um i mean i i just love being part of the, this side the enjoyment of it mm. i would hate to be on the other side honestly i'd never i never want to work in whiskey in terms of the producer then i do work in whiskey i can't yeah. avoid that but yeah, you know, I, I just I just think it's it's challenging for them too because they need to be profitable and be successful. But whiskey is a product of boom and bust. We've never seen it like it is right now. We've never known variety a boom. It's just continuously a boom year after year after year, more and more. We've never known it to be like this for this long. It's good. It's very positive. But we're holding this golden amber thing this ball in our hands. And if we're not careful, we're just going to volley it out of the park and, and just look back on it and say, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just, there's no, there's, there needs to be younger people coming in. There needs to be more vibrant things. It needs to be accessible. It needs to be less about premiumization, uh, fake exclusivity, uh, contrived supply, uh, controlled supply, all of that crap. And I'm just my goodness, it is turned into a whiskey rant. I apologize. It's because it's yeah. it's beyond midnight here now. It's the name like, of the game. That's that's that's, that's a great way to end it. Right <laughs> I think that was yeah. perfectly said. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly it. So hopefully in 2023, uh, you guys find what you're looking for. Hopefully you, you don't have to break the bank to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'd be very interested to know what our viewers are looking to purchase in 2023 and if they're going to continue to do what they've been doing or thinking of switching it up and going a different route this year. Yeah. I'd be very interested to know. Absolutely. Roy, what have you poured? 
I, just because it was sitting right in front of me, a very, very young, uh, the Lindor Sherry cask oh, that was nice. sitting here. Nice. Um, yeah, the, just the, you can see how dark it is. It's just, um, but you can enjoy how dark it is, as I said earlier in the stream, because it is natural. Right, um, and a young age for that one as well, right? Three yeah. years old, yep. It's three years old. And it was, I think it was £59, going from memory, something of that order. So, uh, but still less than 100 Canadian, which is a lot of money to spend on a three-year-old whiskey. But, you know, these guys, when they're putting out eight-year-old product, hopefully it's still going to be £59, right? So, mm -hmm. that'd be nice. Yeah. We catch up. Well, it was an honor to have you on. Um, a proper rant, of course. Absolutely. That's and uh, yeah, um, all the links <laughs> down below to check out all of Roy's stuff, all the Dram Face stuff. Dram Face stuff. Uh, Aqua check him Day, out. the YouTube channel. All of it. 100%. All that stuff. Thanks it so was much. an honor for me to be on. It was a it's pleasure. An absolute us. pleasure to be Thank here you. hanging out with two classy voices and whiskey it's brilliant stuff thanks guys thanks so much pleasure was ours i assure you indeed and uh yeah looking forward to what's coming up on that for sure we'll do this again sometime soon Absolutely. pleasure Cheers, pleasure